Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What My Line? Brought to you by New Stabet, America's leading spray deodorant. Now with its anti-immunity factor. Poop, there goes perspiration. Now let's all play What My Line? Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel, which tonight is broadcasting to you first the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And tonight on my left, we have a very charming, as well as very funny gentleman, one of the most distinguished names in show business, Fred Allen. Uh, thank you, Dorothy. And, John, before we get started here tonight, do you think you could uh, speak to the cameraman for me? <laughs> Why? Well, I'll tell you, I was on this program about five or six weeks ago, and one of my fans sent a postcard in. This was sent to uh, the uh, TV columnist on the commercial appeal at Memphis, Tennessee, Paul Malloy, and it says, Dear Sir, would you please state in your column if Fred Allen is the father of Steve Allen of What's My Line. <laughs> Thank you very much, F.L. Now, if you could have me uh, use a Polaroid tonight, I think I'd be a little better <laughs> off. <laughs> but uh, the reason I am here, actually, is because the company doesn't want to uh, buy a new sign. They uh, got another <laughs> Allen. <laughs> and on my left, ladies and gentlemen, the girl of the, uh, the hour, the hour that we got back this morning when daylight savings time finished, <laughs> Miss Arlene Francis. Well, it's just marvelous to have you back, Fred. And on my left, the king of Random House, who publishes those really remarkable landmark books and all about books for wide awake children. And I've got one of them that adores them, Mr. Bennett Surf. Oh, I'm <laughs> Well, on my left is not only our imperturbable and irreplaceable news analyst and panel moderator, but according to Jim Kilgallen, Dorothy's father, who plays poker with him, the greatest sucker in America for an inside straight, <laughs> Mr. John Charles Daly. Jim is an old colleague of mine. As Miss Dorothy knows, I'm going to have a good talking to about this. I must say I don't fill inside straights, or at least I don't try most of the time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Uh, it's Sunday night, and we're up to our old tricks, and we have uh, some very nice people with some very interesting occupations, and we trust that the panel, and particularly Mr. Steve Allen's father, Mr. Fred Allen over here, has a rough time with him. We'll have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later on, but right now I think it's time for our experts to meet our first challenger whose job has to be spotted. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Lillian J. Rowan, how are you? Is it Miss or Mrs. Rowan? Mrs. Mrs. Rowan. It's Mrs. Rowan, gentlemen. Mrs. Thank you. Yes. Where are you from, Mrs. Rowan? New York City. You're from New York City. Well, then all those fine folks sitting over there are not unknown to you by sight, but you are a bit unknown to them. So will you walk over and let them see you, please? Hi, Mrs. Rowan. Mrs. Rowan, how are you? How is Mr. Rowan? <laughs> all right, Mrs. Rowan, let's go over here. Well, it's nice to know, I mean, if you're going to... Yeah. As you may know, at this point, now that you've met the panel, we give them one free guess as to what your line may be. We begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's a designer. A designer, Mr. Allen. I think that Miss, uh, Mrs. Rowan is the hostess in charge of onions at Hamburger Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis. I think Mrs. Rowan is a telegrapher. Mr. Sir. I think Mrs. Rowan is a stand-in for that girl we had last week, Miss Gina Lollapalooza. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Oh, Lala Bridgeworth. We'll, we'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mrs. Lillian Rowan. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is, but the panel will have to dig. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Mrs. Rowan, you know how we score this operation. Every time you can give them a no, I flip a card. All set? Mrs. Rowan is salaried. 
With that, let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Is there a product involved in what you do? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Well, if there isn't a product, then obviously you deal in services. Is that true? Yes. Well, the people that you uh, uh, service, who receive this service, uh, do they come to you? Yes. Are uh, there... Uh, it's rather interesting. I, uh, I, do you, is this a funny uh, uh, occupation that you have, a profession? No. Well, no, informatively, it's not necessarily it is. funny. Well, Fred. I tell you, if, uh, if a, uh, a fellow... Uh, are, there, are there men who would be interested in uh, the type of work that you do? Would you ask that question again? <clears throat> would you ask the question... Well, I mean, with the type of work, are there... Are there men who might be interested in the type of work that you do? <laughs> yeah, I think it's safe to say there are men who would be interested in the type of work. Yeah. Well, if, uh, if a man came to the place where you work, would he uh, be apt to learn something? <laughs> well, is something that he would learn, is it something that he would, might not learn at college? He wouldn't learn it at college. <laughs> well, this actually, this is a very, uh, a very difficult area to give you a flat yes or no in. Uh, it's something friend. that he wouldn't learn uh, educationally. I mean, intellectually, he would learn nothing. No, I think perhaps you're off on the wrong wicket. It's, um, uh, well, manually, very... would, he, would he learn to do something with his hands? <laughs> well, no, I think that a man coming to the place that uh, Mrs. Rowan uh, works in would not necessarily... He'd be ashamed to be seen in there, would he? Well, that might be an approximation of fact, yes. I'll give you a no on that last question. Thank Two you very much. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Preston. I think you were near a sticky wicket there, Fred. I, uh, I, I sensed that I was doing something wrong, which is my usual <laughs> procedure. Well, may I assume that perhaps your services are mostly for women? Uh, do you have anything to do with women uh, who are interested in children either before or after they're born? No. Not specifically, no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Rowan, when these women come to you, uh, do they uh, submit to something at your hands? No. Mm -hmm. bum, 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 bum. Small conference, <laughs> terribly sorry. That's quite a long conference. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Ben, and Mrs. Rowan stretching. agrees with me, we want to be very fair. In a manner of speaking, you could be right. You, you mean, you do not manipulate these people in any way. That's correct. Is that right? The direct issue of manipulation in the terminology that usually applies in such instances... <laughs> He's off. Uh, ...would, I think, here get you a negative answer, but in an affirmative sense. <laughs> <laughs> Which means better to go ahead. I learned a great deal from that. Uh, Mrs. Like... Rowan, do the ladies, when they come to you, ever remove some of the clothing which they wear when they come into the place? Yes. Uh, for the purpose of examination on your part? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. In other words, they just take it off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> In a manner of speaking, yes. I mean, that's part of what yes. they go there for. That's right. You work indoors. Yes. I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> that will be one of the funniest questions of the year. In if he works outdoors, we'll have a riot. <laughs> there are swimming pools, John. Uh, do these ladies go to your establishment to be improved in some way? Either in the way they feel or the way they look? Sometimes. Yes, I would say that generally, that either in appearance or in feelings, we can assume that the end result will be an improvement in one of these areas or the other. Yeah. Are any towels used in this towels? establishment? Towels. Yes. Yes. Towels, yes. yes. Uh, is temperature germane to this profession? Yes. Temperature, yes, yes, we play upon temperature. Do the ladies sometimes get quite steamed up? <laughs> Is this anything like a Turkish bath? Yes. Yeah. Right. 
Now, you have discovered that Mrs. Rowan has something to do with the Turkish bath, but what does she have to do with the Turkish bath? She manages it. She manages the Turkish bath, is right. Very good. Now. And now, before I say good night to Mrs. Rowan panel, this is the harvest season, and we're up to our old tricks. We're very rich and full tonight with good things, so will you put your masks on while I say good night to Mrs. Mrs. Rowan, please. Oh, what are we going to We make? can't watch? Oh. Well, no, you can't watch the good night. And Mrs. Rowan, let's see now. You did fairly well with the prizes, but more important, I hope you enjoyed your visit. It was nice having you with us, and thanks for waiting on us and what's my life. Good to see you. Now, the truth of the matter is that on what's my line, once again, we're full of the harvest season, as I said, and we have... Uh, two mystery celebrities tonight. We're going to meet the first one of them right now. It's a special feature of our show. And because my friends in the panel would recognize our guest, why, we've given them blindfolds. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes. yes. All right, will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? In the case of our mystery challenger, we dispense with the usual preliminaries, and we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with um, Mr. Bennett, sir. That burst of applause would seem to indicate that you're a national hero. Uh, <laughs> has your picture adorned the papers recently? Yes. <laughs> Not a hero, I don't think. <laughs> Yes, uh, uh, unless hero. my ears are, are uh, betraying me, it's a heroine and not a hero. Is that correct? Wrong there. <laughs> I didn't get that answer. It was rather. It is a heroine. You want to play? <laughs> <laughs> what voice was that? That answer? Is there? Am I correct in assuming there was only one of you up here? No. No. That's one down and nine to go. Miss Kilgallen. I framed that wrong. Well? We framed you, Bennett. <laughs> Are there two heads present? <laughs> yes. And only two? Well, I'm here. <laughs> but you're not a mystery celebrity, John. <laughs> I mean, besides Dorothy. That's right. There are only two heads, Dorothy, as a part of uh, the mystery celebrity. Is one female? Yes. Is one male? Right, though. <laughs> uh, are you connected in some other way, aside from the fact that you're both appearing here at once? Sign these twins? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should say, in a way. Uh, are you related? Either legally or by blood. By what? Either legally or by blood. Either legally or by blood. Indubitably. <laughs> well, <laughs> I must say, I must say that must be good, isn't it? Indubitably. And one or both of you is a national hero? Uh, the assumption of the status of national hero was that of Mr. Sir, on the basis of But nobody calls. denied it. Well, now here I would say that uh, it was not our purpose either to affirm or deny. If you want to be strict in your interpretation of national hero, we would I have to give you I don't if it'll get me a no. <laughs> All right, then let her ride. <laughs> Actually, right. our guests are very well known and much beloved, but uh, not technically, I would say, probably heroes. Are you married to each other? Yes. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Is one of you an actress? Righto. Not you. <laughs> You're going to get in trouble, one. Yeah. What? Oh. Yes. Is the other one of you a hero not in Brooklyn? <laughs> huh? Is the other one of you a hero not in Brooklyn? Green grows the grass, the grass grows I mean, green. the one who isn't an actress. 
Yeah. Is the one who isn't an actress more of a hero in some parts of the country than others, namely Flatbush? Oh, she's thinking of baseball. She's thinking mm. of Leo DeRoche. Mm. No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, are you both uh, engaged in the same profession? Yes. In the same profession? Mm hmm. Well, I had enough trouble with Miss, Mrs. Rowan. I passed. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Presley. Have you performed in pictures together? Occasionally. Have you appeared in television together? Yes. Uh, do you appear regularly in television? Yes. Are you here for any special event that is about to take place? Roy. And it begins with an R. Oh, right? right? Yes, right begins with an R. <laughs> you, get, you get a yes, Miss uh, Allen. You, uh, would you consider yourselves Western stars? They would. Are you here for the opening and I hope the long continuing rodeo? Indubitably. <laughs> <laughs> are you those people that are dearly beloved from coast to coast, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans? That's right. <laughs> we had a lot of fun here. It's too bad you all had to wear your mask. I think I, I should have stayed in England about six more months. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did great. The best accent I've heard in a long time. Would you do that indubitably again? <laughs> I don't think I can say it again. He, he wasn't there. I would only say one word myself. As Arlene has pointed out, these two good folks are love, from one end of the country to the other, and I think I found out the, one of the good, solid reasons for it. I was reading about them both today because they are going to be in the rodeo, which is opening here in New York. And uh, uh, Roy is the author of a sentence, the only kind of happiness you get to keep is the happiness you give away. That's, I think, what makes you both so nice. And thanks for being our guest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we come to another special feature of our program tonight, the appearance of our next mystery celebrity. My friends have got the blindfolds on. Are they all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenges, we always get right down to the general questioning, so we'll begin it with Fred Allen. Uh, I know this isn't Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gotten wind of it. <laughs> uh, from the ovation that was accorded uh, this mystery guest, I assume that you are very well known to the general public? I would say quite so, yes. Yeah. Is he answering him? Is this a man? <laughs> Quite so, yes. Sounds as though it's coming out of you, John, the conversation. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Fred. Well, is this gentleman, uh, is it, is it, uh, we haven't established that it is a gentleman yet. Yes. It's a male, uh, a male party. Yes, a With male. a voice like this, I don't think I've just returned from Copenhagen, no. <laughs> Are you in the entertainment business in some uh, uh, facet or form or some branch of it? Well, if it could be classed as that, yes. Yeah. You are an entertainer? <laughs> yes, Fred. By your yes. own admission? <laughs> <laughs> Is, uh, are, you, uh, are you known in, uh, uh, in television? Do you work in television? Yes. Do you work in uh, movies? I have uh, appeared in several movies, yes. Uh, are you a, a comedian? No. <laughs> Fred, I'm afraid.
afraid I must now wield the judicial hand and rule that our guest is too modest. He has... Well, he ought to know. He should know you... what he is. <laughs> <laughs> are, he you has... a, are you a comedian? I will rule yes. He yes, is a comedian. Yes. And uh, I didn't hear anything about... Uh, is he in the, the movies? Yes. Is he uh, in television? Yes. Do you have a regular uh, program each week? Yes. Comedy. Is it a uh, program that's on at the nighttime or is against uh, one of the morning shows? Today, yesterday, or tomorrow, or one of those? <laughs> <laughs> uh, basic broadcasting, televising, yes. Uh, you're on at night, then, I see. In certain sections of the country, yes. Are you, uh... I, I should know the... If you're a comedian, I should know. Are you a recognized act? <laughs> yes, I have stolen quite a bit of your material. <laughs> I think this gentleman, <laughs> I see the light even with this on, I see the light. Are you by any chance a gentleman who has a, a, a color, for, uses a color for his first name? Yes. Really? <laughs> I give up. <laughs> Oh, my. I give up. Is it, is it, uh, I, I heard something, the last grunt there that, uh, is it Red Skelton? <laughs> I was waiting for Kadiddle Hopper. <laughs> well, friend. I just heard one thing there. Yeah. As a, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the first programs I went on, you sent me my first congratulatory telegram. It was down in, uh, with Uncle Jim Harkins a long time That's ago. That's right. And you've been stealing from him ever yeah, since. Stealing every time. <laughs> well, he's still working with it. That's the trouble I saw. <laughs> well, there's one thing that I think we need to get cleared up in case there's any confusion, because Red was actually right, but his, he is on at night time, because his basic telecasting time is Tuesday night from 8 to 8.30 on this very network, that CBS, one, yeah. his own program. <laughs> but Red made the point that it does get played at odd times around the country oh, by Kinescope. So he gave you that answer which might have confused the issue, we hope. I was confused before Red gave the, uh, the answer. <laughs> <laughs> There's some places in, in uh, Nevada where they show it in a, in a wigwam. <laughs> Could I ask Red a yes, question? Bennett. How did you uh, get along with uh, Leo DeRocher and Earl Wilson and that? Well, act you um, I did a picture with Leo called Whistling in Brooklyn. That's right. Good many years ago. Right. Not a good many years ago. Uh, let's see, Lincoln was shot in 60. <laughs> <laughs> I took a bath in 22. <laughs> it was about that, about that long ago. It was just before I went into the Army. And I was thrown out on account of my back. Well, Red, I must... And a yellow streak up it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my line. I wish we had another ten hours, because I'd love to see Haven't you cutting we? loose with that panel. we got to be <laughs> off the air in exactly 40 seconds. Oh. Red, thanks very much for being our guest. I want you to say good night to the panel. probably noticed earlier on this evening, as we used to say up in the New Hampshire hills when I was a boy, I noticed that we had a harvest coming in this, e this evening, and we've had a harvest. We've had a good deal of fun, we met some very nice people, and I must say that uh, <laughs> Fred, Allen, Fred Allen has made our evening wonderful as he always Until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, John, and good night, Fred. It was lovely having you. Well, thank you very much, Dorothy. Arlene, do you mind if I wear this home tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Fred. Come back soon. Good night, Bennett. I hope we get some contestants next week. Good night, John. <laughs> <laughs> we had lots of them tonight and lots of fun, and Fred, it's been wonderful to have you with us again. Good night, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line.
This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.